Hi everybody, I'm Sue Allen Clayton. Welcome to my channel where we'll be learning the tarot deck one card at a time. Today we'll be talking about the four suits in the tarot deck, which are wands, swords, cups, and pentacles. Once you understand each suit and the associated elements, which are fire, air, water, and earth, reading the tarot cards becomes so much easier because it gives each card a whole new dimension of meaning. In this video, we'll talk about the personality of each suit and how I remember the meaning of each suit. I will be using the Radiant Rider Waite Tarot Deck in this video. So let's get started with the first suit, which is wands. Wands are connected to the element of fire. The way I remember this is that wands are made of wood and fire burns wood. Think about what happens when a forest catches fire. Fire is hot and it travels quickly without asking permission. Fire spreads and goes where we don't want it to. It's flashy, you know it's there. It can change direction with little notice. It's fast moving and full of energy, and it doesn't stay in one place for long. If you think about the qualities of a person that is associated with fire, here are some words that come to mind. Feisty, confident, enthusiastic, adventurous, extroverted, passionate, flashy, and high energy. It's the kind of energy that takes over without stopping and asking permission. These people aren't afraid of heated arguments. I think of Juan's people as not wanting to be tied down. They don't want things to be predictable or get bored easily. They don't want to be contained. They like freedom, action, and being able to do what they want. These are not people who want to sit at a desk, do repetitive work, or be at the bidding of a boss. They'd rather be engaged in athletics or some kind of adventure. These are not people who hide in the background. Fire changes things. It's highly creative as it can take a forest and transform it into ash in a matter of moments. Fire is also risky and confident. It moves forward without asking permission. Other words that we associate with fire are a spark of imagination, a fiery temper, a burning passion, or even burnout. Let's have a look at the cards in the suit of wands. What do you see? For the most part, they look to me like people who love action and attention. In card number four, the happy couple don't look like they got married in secret at City Hall. They are having a public celebration. Same with card number six. He is not hiding his accomplishments. In other cards, they are thinking about taking action, in the case of cards number two and three, or being really busy defending themselves or moving the wands to another place. Next up is the suit of swords, which is associated with the element of air. There are two ways I remember this. First of all, when I think of swords being brandished about, most of the time they are just cutting through the air. Secondly, we need air to talk. We have to move air past our vocal cords to make them vibrate so that we can communicate. And what do we do when we communicate well? We stop, think about things, come up with a plan about how to present our argument, maybe create a PowerPoint presentation. We might argue, pass on information, or come up with some really great ideas. Swords are all about communicating and expressing ourselves. This includes our thoughts about ourselves as well as our thoughts about the world around us. This encompasses intelligence, knowledge, truth, mental clarity, and our sense of right and wrong. Thoughts can be presented by speaking, writing, creating videos, or the aforementioned PowerPoint presentation. Swords people make good lawyers, judges, politicians, journalists, and scientists. Swords have two sides, and these professions look at both sides of an issue or argument without getting weighed down by emotions. Swords people live in their heads and are very intellectual. They can also get stuck in their own heads and deal with things like anxiety and depression. Something else swords do is cut, and words can be mean. So let's take a look at the suit of swords. What do you see? 
Overall, I feel like the ace through tens are pretty depressing. Look at card number three, where swords have literally cut through the heart. Most of the swords seem to be causing injury or have the potential to cause injury. Look at the poor souls in cards eight, nine, and ten. This is definitely a card about mental anguish. Next up is the suit of cups, which is related to the element of water. This card is all about emotions. I remember this because emotional people can cry tears of happiness or sadness. Tears are made out of water. Cups also have to do with our relationships, and certainly people can cause us to cry happy or sad tears. Sometimes we talk about tears flowing like water, or our emotions are blocked or dammed up. We also use terms like the well has run dry to describe someone who has had enough. And we talk about tears flowing and drowning our sorrows. I also think of emotions overtaking you as if a dam has burst. Cups people are gentle, loving, sensitive, nurturing, and feel things very deeply. They do not like conflict. Unlike the suit of swords where we saw people fighting each other, such as the five of swords, the people in this are all getting along. Cups have a feminine feeling in that they're all about emotions, intuition, compassion, and healing. People who embody the element of water make great artists, healers, medical professionals, and social workers. They prefer living out of the limelight and in a peaceful home environment. They are people who have a small circle of friends who they value intensely. Cups people tend to be very sensitive and intuitive. The downside is that they can get their feelings hurt very easily. I know this because I am a cups person, and those nasty YouTube comments really hurt my feelings. <laughs> Let's have a look at the cards in the suit of cups. What do you see? As I mentioned earlier, people in these cards are all getting along. Look at the Three of Cups and the Six of Cups and the Ten of Cups. They are just totally sweet. The saddest cards, such as the Four, Five, and Eight of Cups, show people that are alone. Maybe they don't want to share their sadness or feel that they should be happy 100% of the time. The last element is Pentacles, which represents the element of Earth. These are linked to the Earth and the physical world, which means things that we can see. I remember this because coins are made from metal, and metal comes from the earth. It's also about things like our bodies, homes, nature, and how we earn a living, so it might refer to your job or business. I think of people who are ruled by pentacles as being very patient, cautious, hardworking, and stable. They don't have a fiery temper like the people we talked about in wands or use cutting words like the people we talked about in swords, or have the really deep emotions like the people we talked about in cups. They tend to put their heads down and do their jobs, like the guys in the seven and eight of pentacles. Unlike the elements of air, water, or fire, the element of earth is slow and relatively permanent. My brother recently started camping in the same place we went as kids. I recognized the location immediately after 50 years because the rock formations were exactly the same. This is the earth element. The earth element is also very tactile. Pentacles people enjoy the feeling of digging in the earth in the garden. They like to grow things and enjoy good food. They enjoy being outdoors. They like animals and nice things. Pentacles people don't like change too much, so traditions are very important. They're all about feeling safe and grounded. Pentacles also represent taking good care of your physical body. Now let's look at the cards in the suit of pentacles. It looks to me to be a card about money. We see people earning money in different ways. We see a tradesman in card number three, a farmer in card number seven, and some kind of craftsman in card number eight. Card number four looks like a miser who wants to keep all of the money to himself. Card number five is about being down on your luck, although there appears to be wealth inside the church and the two people are so focused on their problems that they don't see it. Card number six is about charity. And then we see a lot of opulent wealth with cards number nine and ten, as well as with the queen and king. So I hope that gave you a good understanding of the four elements. Fire, which is represented by wands. 
air, which is represented by swords, water, which is represented by cups, and earth, which is represented by pentacles. As I said in the beginning, understanding these will make a huge difference in your ability to read tarot cards. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video.